So this ankle driver was man was able to update itself so it had the correct value to maintain this pose when it switched to IK. That's the next trick, and that's the last trick I'm going to show you on this IK to FK switching. So how did we do that? Well, we did this by creating an IK switch driver. What the hell is an IK switch driver? Well, quite frankly, an IK switch driver is whatever you come up with that gets this value for you in FK. And I know that sounds a little vague. We're going to look at the code here for a bit. And it is vague on purpose. So this is the proc. And if you remember when we stepped through it, we actually skipped this one. What it will do is for the given IK controller, it's going to get the switch value attributes. Oh, that's that one proc I thought we weren't using anymore. Now, this will actually look for the... Uh, let's go up a bit. I forgot about that one. Gets what this is the one I thought that we weren't using anymore. And I forgot this is this is part of that uh, advanced system. All this is really doing is for the IK control, it's going to list all the user defined attributes, and then it's going to look for the one called switch value. Actually it's going to look for the one that has switch value in the name. That's an important distinction. The attribute can any be actually be called anything, but it's got to be called something 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 underscore switch value. Now, what is it called? Um, let me back up a minute. That's not entirely true. It does have to be called something specific. What it has to be called is what it is switching. Uh, let me try to clarify that a little bit because I am not explaining that too well. Let's get back to our proc here, which is, where did the proc go? Turn FK marker, pull vector control, FK. There it is, I can control value. So what is it, what it's going to happen is if you look here, it's got another attribute added to it. Sorry, on the transform, not on the shape. And it's called ankle switch value. Now, as you notice right now, these two match. Okay, and that's because we just switched from FK back to IK. So What's going to happen is that the script is going to come down and it's going to search for that switch value attribute. And that switch value attribute is going to say ankle underscore switch value. And we're going to test that right now. Get adder. Okay, control dot ankle underscore. Quotes. And we see that we get that. So what we do in the IK switching, if we're going from FK to IK, it's going to look to see if it's got a switch value attribute. Then it's going to parse out the switch value part to see what attribute it's switching. So you can have more than one. You can have like 20 of them. doesn't matter. It'll go one by one. And you can look at that in the code you see that it's going to get an array of switch values and for each one it's going to do this and then all the code really does is plug this value into this value and that's it so the $64 question is how do we make sure that this value is correct well that too is something that is left intentionally vague because every situation is going to be different so let's, for example, turn IK blend off and see how what we're doing. In this particular case, actually, let's turn IK blend on just to illustrate. In this particular case, ankle, and we can map that connection. Ankle 
ankle goes directly into ankle pivot and actually it goes into the rotate Z so this value is actually the number of degrees that that pivot point is being rotated so what we've done in this particular case is we created this joint which is our ankle switch driver and it's got a simple SC control that's tied up into here it's um, if we map that real quick let's see I can't handle for that see and it's just point constraint there and so what will happen is let's go ahead and turn the IK blend off and let's rotate this and I'll just kind of go step by step what it's actually doing so again we're going to switch from IK or from FK to IK so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to snap this controller to where the FK marker is which will be about there then it will snap the pull vector control to where its marker is. Then it is going to update the ankle switch value. So ankle is going to become 26.133. Where is this number being generated? It's being generated by this joint that's set up to point to the top. And again we can map that. As you can see here, that rotation, that rotate Z, is coming straight into the IK control. So Maya is going to tell us, we, we have set up rules for Maya. Sorry, it's going to be 25.759. Maya is going to, we've set up rules for Maya to figure out what that attribute is going to be. Now, the, the trick here is, again, it's left pretty vague because the next system may require a different setup that is left open to you you as the character TD have got to come up with a mechanism that will drive this value to match this and you can come up with that any way that works for you uh, the only thing that it's really doing is reading that value and plugging it in there the rest is up to you and I we are leaving it at that We'll go ahead and play with it and uh, examine it and reverse engineer it to the best of your abilities and voila and that's the latest and greatest and I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that you walk away with this not necessarily saying okay now I know how to do IKFK switching but coming away from this going okay now I know how he did it but now I'm gonna come up with some ideas on my own on how to take this idea and run with it I would really love to see somebody come back and saying hey that was a great idea but look how much further I took it I was able to do X Y and Z with it and that's really what I hope for when I when I try to do these kind of lectures is not for you to copy uh, but for you to learn and and grow and to take things even further. Uh, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this.